We'll come back for more from our workshop in the 2021 NICE project. I think with the passage, one of the reasons we selected it mostly is because it, it is really the epitome of how Tarzan defines love as he understands that word, that concept in human uh, life. And, you know, it's, it's, like you said, it's full steam ahead. There's no pu punches pulled. He's, he's going for the, going for the jugular. <laughs> you know, <laughs> He's just like, he's attacking love and, 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 you know, convincing this, this beautiful woman that, that she's his and he's hers, just like he would attack, you know, an animal. He had to survive. He conquered to survive, you know? So, um, you know, I don't know. I think his definition of love, protection, providing, uh, that's a pretty standard yeah. definition of love. I want you to, to be well fed mm -hmm. and safe, and I want the best things in the world for you. I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I'm going to get them for you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the one that can walk down the path of life with you. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, you know, it led us to think about how we define love and how, how we as creatives can express our definition of love in our art. And <clears throat> Tarzan used the words he knew, you know, that he'd self-taught, you know, with his parents' books. And he used the visuals and the images of his life in the jungle and what he could provide and do based on his world, you know, and I think that's what all of us as creatives do in our art. It's just we, you know, the definition of love might be different and how we express it might be different. So maybe we could just spend a few minutes talking about that before we end this over long workshop that has already gone too long. <laughs> but I do want to talk about inspired art because that's, you know, part of what we do with NICE. So how, how do we define love and put it into our artwork? Anyone? It's such a big question. I know. <laughs> I'm going to have to dream about that one. Ooh, I like that. Dream about it. Mm -hmm. Well, as poets, I think, you know, poets have a history of long standing tradition of love poetry, you know, writing love poetry. You don't really talk about other art forms the same way you talk about poetry, love poetry. Well, love songs. I don't think anybody talks about paintings as, oh, those are love paintings. You know, we don't, you know, it's just, we might have romantic paintings or there might be, you know, some sort of theme of romance, but there isn't. The way we say love poems and love songs in you know popular consciousness that we don't really do that with artwork like visual artwork um love stories are you know what we call romances you know books right so we've got love stories love songs love poems and and then artwork that somehow has love in it but doesn't have that kind of a label so much a specific specific label <laughs> Yeah, no, and I think that something that we uh, think of with modern romance is that sense of mystery. And with Tarzan's little note here, there is no mystery. No, it the only mystery is who the hell is this guy who's writing this note? That's you know? true. That's, <laughs> but that's there, the mystery. You know, and that, you know, that's kind of, there's, su there's such borderline creepy stuff in this book sometimes. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, if you woke up one morning and found a note stuck on your door that was the modern version of Tarzan's note, mm -hmm. you would call the police and say, I have a stalker. <laughs> and I don't know who it is. Really? I mean, I mean, you know, so the that line between romance and creepy is is throughout this book. It's there's a lot of it in there, you know, and uh, it's it's an interesting you know read when you, when you approach it from that perspective and, and find those scenes in the book that are just borderline creepy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I mean, as much as I love that passage for it's just blunt, I am yours, you are mine, and this is it, you know. I, it, it's hard to take it out of, and it is a standalone passage, we claim that. It's still hard for me sometimes to let it be standalone because I have it in that context of, she doesn't know who's writing this to her. It's a stalker in the jungle you know it's so weird so <laughs> that's, true. that's I true i didn't really want stalkerism to be the ending note of our <laughs> workshop well, and, and in the end in the book it's not because ultimately <coughs> he accepts her rejection you yeah. know in the end he's a good model of accepting consent 
in the end, he acts like a proper English gentleman would, mm -hmm. and he does the honorable thing. And that, I think, was Burroughs' final message. Yes. That even in the face of a crushing disappointment, you know, he Tarzan had just gone to the ends of the earth in his own mind, you know, with the help of Darno to find Jane. He felt that strongly about her. In the face of that kind of crushing disappointment after going through everything he went through to get to her, he does the honorable thing and doesn't act like an animal. He doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, rage or have violence or anything. He just determines to not claim his inheritance and which she would then be able to marry him and save her father and all that stuff you know um he he would then be the uh, uh eccentric british lord and she would be able to live by his side in kind of awkward social moments because british aristocracy can be eccentric you know he would just be oh the wild yeah the the eccentric wild jungle man British aristocracy person, um, but he doesn't he doesn't do that he gives everything up and leaves her, you know honors her decision. So interesting that Burroughs brings it round to that in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting. Yeah. So okay, well that's that. That's our that's our discussion. Anybody want to add anything else? No, I think we covered it thoroughly. Did you want to cover anything, Deborah? No, lots, lots to think about. I'm going to. Have you think to go you'll to the ever library. read the book? I was going to say, do you think you'll ever read the book? I hope you <laughs> no, read. No, I'm going to have to read it because, um, like I said, I've only you know yeah. been I've become familiar with it through the different movies. I think there are parts of it that but you'll I, find beautifully written that you'll yeah, appreciate really the language. Like that, uh, the director's <laughs> notes of the one that you read, Sarah, that mm -hmm. puts it into a whole other. You you might novel. be able to get I, that I love. I love approaching it with those glasses on rather than all this other stuff. You should uh, um, see if the library can get a copy of that uh, Legend of Greystoke, the 1984 movie. The director of Greystoke is the one that wrote that, Sarah? The quote, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that to me is, I mean, you know, all throughout this, you know, Tarzan is the most honest Mm -hmm. he's you know nowhere near pretentious nowhere near false nowhere near i mean he, he brings to the table who he truly is and that quote to see that that uh, the way that the director handles that it keeps him in that honesty and mm -hmm. in that purity and in that you know he is the good of goodness and um I like that. Yeah. Those there's a, there's a, there's a simplicity to his character mm -hmm. in that film that I think captures the best parts of what Burroughs characterization in yeah. the book offered. Um, I do hope you read the book though, because I think just because I know how much you love words and oh, yeah. the way words get put together. Um, I think you'll find some of it is, is, beautifully written and some of it is beautifully written even though what it's saying is problematic and awkward and and not mm -hmm. good in in um, through a modern lens I'm not gonna, I, I don't focus yeah. on the problems yeah um, just, i just want to make sure our projects are due in two weeks from today right 23rd yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay is that right i just want to make sure 23rd yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> then the 30th is our presentation I, oh my brain okay. is just uh yeah Alrighty. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for the mental stimulation and the heart stimulation. I well, love thanks for this. being our special like guest again. again. I know. Thank you for being our special guest Always again. Always wonderful oh, to have you, Deborah. No, no. Yeah. I look so forward to this. Oh uh, well, thank we so we look much, forward lady. to we look forward to seeing what you create because oh my gosh, <laughs> I know it's going to be fantastic. All of it. So, all, all right. right. Thank you for that vote so, of confidence. Thank so, you for all that you do. This has been a wonderful, wonderful year of selections and. You guys have done yeah. your research well, and I just, I'm just, just Yay. rock the joint. You Yay! Know? <laughs> and and we'll have selected presentations for everybody on September 30th. So yay! All right, all right. sleep well, you all. All right, bye. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs>
This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the, the Roundtable. Table.